Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a Ico model 950B. Um, this particular unit is going to get re refurbished and sent back down to the Greenville Makerspace, which I have been working on refurbishing some gear so they could get some benches started for experimentation and building stuff. This particular unit is an Ico version to the Heathkit uh, IT28B, or no, IT28 that I have here in the lab. So I'm going to get this up and going for the Makerspace. This one has a slightly lower voltage range than um, the IT28, but the voltage is infinitely variable, which I actually like a little bit better than the IT. The IT's got a step switch. This has a potentiometer. But we'll take this through we'll take this through a restoration and a full alignment, whatever that looks like through the uh, documentation. Not that I think they'll use the um, the capacitance bridge too much, but the uh, capacitor checker leakage test will be very useful down there. So with that, let's get into it, get started, and see what we have. Uh, for this particular unit, I believe it's the eight screws on the face, and it'll pop out. Gonna use the high speed screwdriver for this one. Because it definitely makes getting into places where I'm not supposed to be a whole lot quicker. Uh, looks like we have uh, self tapping, self tapping screws. I do not recommend starting with a power power tools. I have oh nope, there's one in the back. I have been in lots of places. You definitely take a feel. To not blow screws out. Oh, we are going to need to do some work. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Yikes. I'm glad I didn't turn this on before <laughs> we tore it apart. Um, that's got to go. This has got to go. These have to go. That has to go. That might. Have, yep, that's going to have to go. Ugh. That's the power switch. Selector. Oh, there's another one up top. Big power pot. That's interesting. Wow. You don't see uh, copper spade lugs much anymore. This may not have been a kit. This has some tested marks. I don't know how well those are going to show up in the camera. Nice and light. Not too terrible. Uh, it does look like we have a capacitor across the AC line. to Or the uh, AC line to chassis ground. So that's going to get replaced. That's down here. This is on one side of the switch to ground. So that will get swapped out to an XY cap. This one's probably just going to need a recap and are we a rectifier? What are we? A 6X5. Yes, we are a rectifier, so that's nice and tight. Nothing looks burnt, so like no uh, no resistors look fried up and charred which is good, but we'll test their values too, just to make sure. We have one domino cap here. That can stay. Do need to get this this guy out. That one's gonna be fun. 
we'll make some room. I'll make some room where I can work on this one when this one gets swapped out to something much smaller. Um, for as big as this unit was, I was kind of expecting more in there. This uh, this is kind of um, not much going on. But let me get started, and uh, we'll get some caps replaced. Then we'll plug it in and see if it works. Okay, working on the ICO, and we had to do some kind of crazy things. Uh, we have this block of caps here, which was this Chungus electrolytic cap. Uh, this was an 8 microfarad at 525 working volts DC. Now that got me a little nervous because typically you don't see working voltages that high on electrolytics. So I had a sneaking suspicion this was right up against the rail, or if not a little over the rail, because you could get away with that with um, electrolytics from back in the day. So we did some measuring, and I'll show you what ended up happening, but I ended up needing two 22 microfarad 400 volt caps in series. Now this creates a roughly 11 microfarad capacitor at 800 volts of isolation. These are also very good high quality caps. So we'll hook the meter back up and I will show you guys why that was important when we turn this on. Uh, the other cap that I've replaced, so I've pretty much done rebuilding the power supply in this unit, is this one down here. That was a, actually that was a West German capacitor, which you don't see very often. But we had this guy, nice long electrolytic, and this was at, oh, uh, this was, what was this? Uh, 4 microfarad at 250 volts. I have some 4.7 microfarads at 450 volts. That should take care of the surge voltages, but just because, we're going to check. So, because I need, to volt, I need to measure north of 500 volts, I've got the... Uh, 412A hooked up here, and I've got the uh, 400 a, uh, DM502 hooked up right here at the rectifier tube. So this would be the bulk supply. This is also a negative capacitor, uh, a negative supply, so it is not in circuit backwards. It's supposed to be negative side of the cap to the circuit. So on the 412A, we're on the 1000 volt range. We have the negative option selected. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Unit is now on and warming up. Now, to measure this correctly, we have a 1000 volt scale, so we're at the top, top scale. So right dead center will be about 500 volts. And this is actually kind of fooling, because if you give it a second to let it finish charging, it's going to drift just past the 500 volt mark, right about. About there's where it's going to settle off. So the problem with that is... If I had used this capacitor, a 10 microfarad at 500 volts, we'd be sitting about 25, 35 volts high of its rated voltage. So even though that's a high quality capacitor, modern day capacitors are, are completely intolerant of over voltage and it would not have lived very long there. Hence why we had to series up to capacitors. I did do some checking and I did actually end up ordering a capacitor that would fit the bill just in case the series units didn't fit physically. Uh, it was $38 per cap. Very expensive for 600 volt electrolytic capacitors and there were not many options. Um, especially leaded. I can get some better caps if I go into the snap realm but mounting a snap cap in this area of the circuit would be difficult to say the least. So, 
Uh, what's our off the rectifier tube looking like? Straight off the rectifier tube, we are at uh, 227, so that 450 volt cap will live there forever, and it won't be a problem. I'm going to let this cool off so we can check some surge voltage and see what it's going to look like when it's fully fired up. I have the meter set to 1,000 volts. Meter is going on. Climbing, yeah, we hit about three, 300. I think I saw about 350 when the unit was dead cold, so that 450 volt cap will live forever at 350, it won't care. So that's gonna be good as the bulk supply off of the rectifier tube. That gets us into rebuilding the band switch and the big giant caps on the, on the top side of the unit. I still need to replace those. I haven't done that yet. So a couple of more waxies to go. We got, let's see, five, I think, total. So making progress. Not 100% done yet, but we're getting there. Okay, here we are with all the capacitors replaced. Those guys, we've got this one over here, that one down there, and that one over there. This one is in the AC path. It's in the watt meter. So I had to use one of the big uh, yellow caps from the leftover from the Heathkit TT1 video because we have ran into that before. That replaced this giant 2 microfarad 150 volt DC um, unit. And then let's fire this up. See if we get any smoke. Hopefully we shouldn't. Uh, that's off. We'll pop in the rectifier tube. And let's go. Our eye tube is warming up. That's the resistance bridge. So it's reacting on the 5 meg to 500 meg ohm. Uh, it's checking the resistance so we can actually, at 500 meg ohm, the eye's opening, and it's measuring the uh, leakage. So incredibly sensitive there. Let's check, uh, well, let's check if, um, Let's check a capacitor real quick. Let me go grab one. All right, let's drop it down. Oh, yeah, we can get the eye to open. All the way. Uh. Right there. And that's a 0 0.5 microfarad just under 0.5 microfarad. And this is a 0.47 microfarad, so that's actually reading pretty accurately. That's actually not too bad. There are no calibration adjustments on this particular unit, so nothing we can do to um, tighten up the performance. It is what it is. But one of the reasons why I uh, wanted to get this one up and running and ready to go was I wanted to test, let me grab meter leads. Okay, we have a non-polarized capacitor hooked up in circuit. Just use one of these really good high quality ones that I use in restorations. And we have this on the paper and mica test. Let's roll this up, kind of see what voltage comes across the cap with the meter. Yeah, we'll put about 300 volts across it. Let's see what it does. Well, the uh, dial accuracy is quite good. That's set to 300, and it's actually outputting 304 on the DMM. It's not opening the eye, probably because of the impedance of the DMM. Back this down. 
Let's see if we can't. Undo the DMM. If we can get this cap to pass. This is a 600 volt cap, so it should not care. There it goes. Yeah, it was just the meter impedance. So this is, uh, this is testing capacitors exactly as I'd expect them to. So I'm going to let this burn on the bench just to make sure we don't have um, any other problems. This looks like a very low unit, low time unit. The uh, eye tube on this one's very bright. I did not replace this. So I don't think this unit has seen a lot of time on it, but let me get it thrown back in the case. And um, well, I'll let it sit on the bench and cook for a while just to make sure we don't have any other problems. And then... Uh, it's ready to go back down to Tennessee. Okay, we're back in the case for some burn down testing. Uh, units right now is drawing about three and a half watts. Well, uh, well started up, so barely tickling the meter. I'm gonna let this run for a while and uh, just make sure it doesn't have any problems. And if it doesn't, we will put this in the fixed to go back pile to the makerspace. We had one more thing to do before I buttoned everything back up because I doubled up that uh, power supply capacitor. I didn't want the uh, one cap doing all the work and the other cap sitting there bored, so I used one mega ohm balance resistors across the capacitors to even up the voltage. You can see the uh, meter leads connected there. We are have them connected in reverse polarity, so we are getting the correct polarity or a positive polarity on the meter. But as we can see on two meters, we have about 270 volts across the first cap and about 245 volts across the second cap. So they're both four, five, uh, 450 volt caps. So uh, they will live like that forever. It won't be a problem. So back in the case and let it keep burning. Okay, well, everything was good. Uh, the unit baked in all night, no problems. Not all night, uh, but for the rest of the evening. No problems in the uh, current draw or anything else. So this one's ready to go back. I thank everyone for joining me in the lab for the restoration adventure on a Ico 950B. The dish of shame. We have some rather large uh, wax capacitors that definitely had to go. And some... Uh, higher than normal voltage electrolytics that needed to go. But uh, standard fare for something of this age. Everything else was fine, actually. I checked the resistors and everything was in spec. So all good there. So once again, thanks for joining us in the lab. If you're enjoying these videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. As always, I will see everyone in the comment section in between videos. And more is always on the way.